So Mark, um, most people are very surprised when they get an Emmy nomination, but you must have been doubly surprised because when the nominations were first announced, your name wasn't uh, among the nominees initially. So um, I don't usually ask this question because most people have the same kind of rote answer, but uh, what was it like when you found out you had been nominated for an Emmy? <laughs> That's actually, it's actually a very good question because uh, it was a strange day. Um, I found out I was actually working uh, uh, editing on a show and I was in the Bay and I'd watched the announcements early in the morning and didn't get a nomination and the show, you know, didn't get nominated. and was like, Oh, that's typical. Um, none of the actors got nominated and I felt a little bad about that. Um, but it was like, okay, this, you know, uh, uh, that, that happens, but I was in editing and I got a call from Maury McIntyre, who's the president of the Academy. And I was like, well, that's odd. I don't know why he'd be calling me. And he gets on and he says, hey, I just got to apologize, um, but I think you'll be okay with the apology. And I was like, okay, I don't know where this is going. And he told me I was nominated. And the emotion was was great. It was such a thrill. It was like, wait, the, the joy of, of was soon dissipated though, because wait, why wasn't it announced then? And he went on to explain it, it slipped through the cracks. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is, uh, I'm nominated. And the funny thing was, he goes, oh, just don't tell anybody yet because we just have to put out an announcement and we want to make sure everything know. And I was like, okay, I'm very happy, but I'm not because uh, I can't tell anybody yet. And so finally we hung up and uh, my editor looking at me hearing one side of the conversation and he's like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I, I just got nominated for an Emmy. It couldn't be better. And I said, but you can't tell anybody because you're the only one who knows. And he said, that's fine. And then an hour later, they put out the announcement. And then I had a whole new rush of things. And it actually worked out great because in a way, I had my own private announcement for being nominated. And I had a lot of people started calling saying, yeah, I saw the article about you. It wasn't about all the directors. It wasn't about all the other shows. It was about me. So, uh, so it was thrilling. It was great. Uh, you've uh, directed over 200 episodes of this show. You've been with it from the very beginning, starting with the second episode. So you would know better than anybody, how has the show developed over these years? And more to the point, how has your work as a director developed over the course of these 200 episodes? Okay, well, it's a great question. Uh, to answer the first part, what I love about this show um, is, is the writing has taken this taken it through its course very naturally, very organically. Um, they've never once said, oh, we have to stunt cast and bring some, someone in or let's do this. Um, Maya Bialik's character was a one-off, was just at the end of a season, played a little part in the tag. And after seeing that success, they went, huh, this is interesting. I wonder if we could have a relationship with Sheldon, something they never had thought of before. And it came out of that episode. So the next year we explored it a little bit with a couple episodes and went, wow, there's a whole lot of different stories here. And to their credit, they said, let's start writing to that. And they never go past that point. They don't try to plan out the year. They don't try to have, okay, here's our arc. And this is where we're going to, this is what's going to happen at the last episode. And this is going to be the cliffhanger. All the writing comes out very organically um, and naturally. And they only write five weeks ahead, usually of, of where they're at at that point. Um, and, to take that a step further then for the directing, the same thing has happened for me. Um, the first year of a show is always um, finding out the rhythms and seeing how the writing works, which actors work well together, relationships. And as a director, I've always felt of it's like a coach of a, of a team and, oh, who, who are the starters? Who comes in? Who's best as a sub? And it's making sure you have that bench and everyone working together. And I found myself uh, throughout the years uh, as as the style developed of the show, my instincts developed along with it, and it got better, sharper, and we started looking for little things, what I could do visually to make this better. The writing was always strong, and it was like, okay, this is funny. How can we make it a little funnier? And trying to add little tricks, a little, uh, a little physical thing that we may add, um, or visually something that you don't normally see on a sitcom. And uh, uh, being, being able to know your having that many episodes and being able to come back, you can try things and not feel that, oh, if this doesn't work, you know, the show may be canceled in three weeks and we're never we're never going to see it again. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a freedom to play. Uh, now, uh, you've been working in the format of, of multi-camera sitcoms. 
yes. uh, which, you know, the other nominees in your category are all single cam and uh, they have been all single cam for about seven years now. Right. Um, what about that format? I mean, I, I, I'm a fan of both formats, I should mm -hmm. say. I think yeah. they each have their certain merits for each different kind of show. I mean, what about that format works for something like the Big Bang Theory? Uh, well, the, the multicam format is always always worked i mean if you look back at the i mean starting with i love lucy uh um uh, having that audio having a live audience there um uh, dictates the evening and how things go and you get such a great energy you get such a different performance because oftentimes you'll hear it from multicam shows they'll pre-shoot things but then if they do the scene again live in front of the audience it's completely different and they don't like editing both together because there's a different energy the laugh, the rhythms become different and they try to use everything they can from the live audience um, because you can't replicate that. You can't add a laugh track or, or something in a, to a single cam and get that same sort of effect. And there's no way they can act towards that in a single camera. You, you can't wait for a laugh that isn't there. And so um, just what had happened is, you know, seven, eight years ago, the, the, the single cam became very fashionable. Um, it was something to do and it was and networks are always looking for, oh, that's neat. That's new. Let's try that. And I really honestly believe a, a lot of people thought, oh, the multicam was old fashioned or old school and would poo poo it a little bit and say, nah, you know, that's fine. But uh, we're going to try this new look, the single the single cam look. And like you say, they both have merits. They're both great and they can both be funny. And really, the bottom line is, is it's funny. Um, we just get to know instantly having an audience there with a multicam. We've done, sometimes you're going along and it's going great, and you've done a joke that's kind of worked all week, and in front of the audience it falls flat, and it's like, uh oh, better change it. <laughs> and and we do, we ch we change it right on on the moment, see if we get the laugh, and then we move on. And in single camera, a lot of times it's just all right. Let's do four different versions of this joke. Try it this way. Try it this way. And until you really get to post and put it together and see the whole thing, because one part of the scene may be shot on Tuesday, uh, the next part may not be shot till Friday. And until you have it together in editing, um, you don't know if it's really working and what rhythms and which jokes work. But with the multicam, you know instantly. And that puts a different pressure on, too. The writing has to be stronger. A lot of times the performing has to be stronger. You can't get away with things uh, in front of the audience. They're, it's too honest. And uh, that's probably the biggest difference. And I love doing both. Um, I like doing both, but there's there's something about the immediacy of that multicam when you finish a show, you've, you've finished a show. Right, I mean, I think that, uh... You know, to your point, a lot of it, it, it all comes down to how good is the writing and how good is the acting. It doesn't matter which way you shoot it. If those aren't up to snuff, then you're not going to have a good show. Right. Um, so in, in that thing, uh, take us through the production of an episode. Take us through the week and um, how you get to that point where you're going to shoot it in front of an audience. Oh, great. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is something I, I, I love doing. I often teach a class sometimes. And this is exactly what we do is take people through a week. Um, it's a five day schedule with what we have. Uh, basically, a, a Monday through Friday or a Wednesday through Tuesday, depending on uh, what kind of production it is. But the first day is a table read. We do a production meeting. We've I've got the script. I've broken it down. Um, we sit around with all the production, uh, the department heads. And you go through page by page. What props are you going to need? How should the wardrobe look? Um, what kind of music are we going to have? A anything that comes up technically that's in the script. Uh, will this be pre-shot? What kind of set is this? Are we doing? How do we dress it? Uh, you go through and try and get as many answers as you can there. And then we table read. We get notes from the network. Eh, that's good. We liked it. We didn't like it. Um, could we change this part of the story? Uh, and the writers start to rewrite. Um, according to those notes, and I'll take the actors on stage and start putting the show on its feet. We'll usually the first day just kind of do the bare bones, uh, do a general structure and, and go through all the scenes. And then the next day is uh, we've gotten a rewrite. The writers have worked all night. We apply that the next day. We uh, rehearse the new stuff, the new jokes. Maybe there's a new gag about uh, a new stunt that has to be done. Um, we try and incorporate it. At the end of the day, 
uh, the writers come down, the studio comes down, and we do a run through at the end of the day. So the whole show, top to bottom, um, it tells us what's working. The the writers are getting to see what they heard if it worked at the table. Now they're seeing it on its feet, and if it still works, or maybe they can add a little something. And in our rehearsal process, hopefully we've added a little something, made a little change, made it sharper, made it cleaner. Um, and we do that. And with that knowledge, the writers go back and rewrite again. And then we get a new script the next day with the changes and we start the same process again on the third day. Um, hopefully we have more props now that the, the final prop is there or the wardrobe, the purse we're going to use. And what we do is end up doing a run, rehearse all day, do a run through again at the end of the day. The difference here is the network has come. So they are now going to see if their notes were, were listened to or taken. And uh, if, if, it, if we adjust it accordingly. Um, and then what happens is uh, after that run through, uh, again, they'll start rewriting, uh, depending on if jokes worked, if things didn't work. And then we go into our tech days and the next day is on camera. And what I normally uh, do on a show is uh, we, we camera block the scenes, we'll pre-shoot a certain amount of scenes, uh, depending on uh, the technical aspects of it. We try to do as much as we can in front of the audience, uh, but we break down, get that done through the whole day. And then on Friday, uh, we refresh, we have an idea, we do a little run through on camera. So everyone knows what the show is going to look like. Uh, the writers can give some last minute notes. The producers, Hey, let's, let's do this joke a little bigger. Can it be in a two shot little, little tweaks all the way. And then we bring the audience in and do it in each scene for us. We usually do each scene twice do a pickup here and there and try and move on. Cause what we're trying to accomplish is, is show that audience a play, show them uh, the 250 people there. We don't want them there for six hours and them getting tired and sore and not being energized to laugh. You want to get through the show. So they, they're like, they want to watch a show at home uh, is, is what you want to try and bring them. And that's basically the week. Yeah, I actually went to a uh, taping of the new Will and Grace recently, uh, and uh, it, was, it was fascinating to see the ways that you know the writers and will work with the director, and the director works with the cast, and they all come together to you know improve upon what you've just seen. And you know, it's really interesting to see how that's put together. Yeah, it's 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 that's part of the exciting thing is is even if something is working well, like you said, you can improve it. Someone has a a, a pitch for a, a different joke. And again, it's you try that and an audience isn't ready for it necessarily that things are going to change. They're thinking they're seeing the same scene again. You throw in a new joke, it gets a surprise laugh. Uh, it brings the energy up again, maybe a couple different reactions that you weren't expecting. And it just makes makes it funnier, you know, and that, that's what you're that's the bottom line. That's what you're looking for. Now, you are nominated for uh, the episode entitled The Bow Tie Symmetry. Yeah. Um, of, I always have a hard time getting the titles of these episodes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a little bit of a nerd to get some of these. Yeah. <laughs> um, of all the episodes you could have submitted, what about that one stood out to you? Uh, the biggest thing about the uh, this episode was not only was it special because it was a wedding and it was two characters that people have been following for 11 years and someone you, if you watch the pilot or the first year, you're like, there's no way this guy's ever going to be married. This guy would ever be with a girl. There's no way. But again, throughout the years, you saw this gradual change and, and organically what this character became, how they became, uh, uh, united with one another, and it became a special moment. People really, really care about these characters. They, they've, they've lived with them for a long time. You know, eleven years, and and they treat them a little bit like family. They're in the room every week or every day with a, with the show and syndication. People are watching it a lot, and so it was a special moment because weddings are special for any member of your family. It's it's a big day. Uh, what made it especially challenging was I think we had over 22 speaking parts um, and with so many guest stars from Kathy Bates to Mark Hamill to Jerry O'Connell. Uh, it was it was trying to take a lot of pieces of a puzzle, getting them all together. And in that case, it was it was handling a lot of you know, we had a lot of plates in the air at all times. Um, be technically, 
um, how to shoot it. Uh, uh, and we ended up doing a lot of single camera elements. If you really look at it, it wasn't just the fourth wall things. We had to, uh, we had to use a fourth wall a lot. We had to get reactions. We had to get in there and get close. We did some nice, great soft lighting, um, during the wedding scenes to make it a little more emotional and make it not feel, ah, uh, it's just another sitcom. It's just another ep episode. Uh, Let's, who cares that much? It, it, we put a lot of lot of effort into making it a little special because the 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 content was special to us. What do you think is the quality that this show has that has sustained it for going into twelve seasons now? Um, you know, I mean, what do you think keeps people watching this show? Boy, uh, I would say primarily it's still funny. Um, every show. If you look back and hit, you know, a lot of shows after three, four years, you get repeating the same stories over and over and you start seeing a fall off in numbers because people feel, oh, I've already seen this, you know, and, and a show can die a little quickly. They kind of fall off the radar. Um, this has never really happened. We kept thinking, oh, you're getting into season, you know, eight and nine and you'd start seeing a fall off in numbers. And there never was that. And there was this, oh my God, we're still, we're still in the, one of the top two shows every week in and out. Um, this is, this is amazing. And not that there was a pressure, but you're like, we got to perform. People still love this and we've got to come through for them. And again, and that goes back to, we're not trying to do gimmicky things. We're trying to do honest stories. And if you're doing honest stories, relatable stories, and that's, that's, what's been the whole key, uh, since the beginning this show even though you can call them nerds and it's about that everybody can relate to these characters every guy out there has had trouble talking to a girl it doesn't matter if you're a nerd or not or whatever it's not easy sometimes to pick up that phone or to ask a girl for a date or to go up to her at a club so when you see someone else doing it when you see a nerd doing it you understand you relate to them i've been there and that's what has connected the audience to these characters and that's why they stick with them and they don't uh you know all of a sudden seven years seven or eight oh we're gonna go to hawaii and we're gonna do these special episodes where they aren't real character driven if uh i mean the one thing the writers and we always keep an eye on is is would these characters do that you know because sometimes i know stories get pitched and or jokes oh it'd be funny if we did that but you got to kill it because it's like nah that's that's not something Leonard would do, or, you know, no, that's not really Penny. This, and, and the characters, the writers, myself, you're, if you're honest with it, it's like, yeah, it's funny, but that's not true to the story. That's not true to what the show is. And I think because we've done that, people have stuck with the show and the numbers have been great. Well, Mark, thank you so much. And congratulations on the nomination. This has been really informative and I appreciate it. Oh, good, good. I love it. Uh, uh, thanks so much. I'm, I'm looking forward to the night and, uh, uh, let me know if there's any other questions. <laughs> Thank you.